Now we're back on the Mana Symbol channel. We're playing a little bit of this Pioneer Creativity deck, but it's not your mom's Pioneer Creativity deck. This is with a fairly new printing, Atraxa Grand Unifier. So uh, you've got this uh, payoff card that you're going to use Indomitable Creativity to transform uh, either a creature or artifact into. Um, we've got some Mutavolts in the mana base because we cannot support Dwarven Mine. Uh, but then we've got cards like Secrets of the Key that make tokens. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker makes a lot of tokens. Prismari Command makes tokens. Uh, no copies of Big Score and four copies of Shark Typhoon. Um, and what attracts the Grand Unifier does when it comes in, uh, it's, it is legendary, so uh, theoretically we only want a creativity for X1, which is why Transmogrify is a fine card to have as an extra copy of uh, creativity in this deck. Uh, when it enters, we look at the top, or we re reveal the top 10 cards of our library, and for each card type, we can put a card into our hand. This draws you, in this deck, it's an average of three to four cards, it feels like, um, from how I played it yesterday. Um, although, if you flip an Atraxa, you don't necessarily want to put that in your hand. So, it's like two or three cards in most scenarios. You'll get an instant, a land, and maybe a sorcery. Um, sometimes you get an enchantment. Uh, so it's also a 7-7 Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink. Um, and the main thing that's appealing about Atraxa over Torrential Gear Hulk or um, uh, World Spine Worm is that for X1, you get a huge swing of resources that I've found to be really good against Red Black particularly, um, where some of the other ones are... They're just not quite good enough when you X1. Uh, especially with Torrential Gearhulk, you need to already have a good instant in the graveyard. Um, and that can be difficult. Um, also, that version particularly plays with graveyard synergies that this has none of. We're not even playing any copies of Dig Through Time. We're just playing four copies of Impulse instead. Um, I, I, I say instead. We're playing four copies of Impulse for card selection, uh, as well as the Prismari Commands and Fable of the Mirror Breaker. There's a ludicrous amount of card selection in this deck, um, which is why it's okay to play Make Disappear as your counterspell of choice over Sensor, in my opinion. I really like Sensor being able to sort of self-card select, but it, it is true that a lot of the time uh, uh, Force Spike is not as good as uh, Squelch, which, you know, if we had Mana League, we'd, we'd play Mana League, but we don't. Um, and then the sideboard has a bunch of stuff for the metagame at large. I think it's probably well built. Uh, I've had a hard time really putting my finger on how I want to build sideboards uh, for this format. Um, so I came home from uh, being at the RC all weekend. Uh, I was not playing in the main event. I was just playing sides. And uh, I played the Blue-Red Chandra turns deck in two different tournaments. I did okay. Um... I think that deck is, because it's a control deck that doesn't have a powerful payoff for cheap that can just like pull you ahead immediately, it's a lot harder and it's a lot more impactful to very carefully build all your your, your deck um, for, for the metagame. So, um, whereas this one has the sort of same thing as creativity where sometimes you're behind but you just burst out and win. Um, so, I came home last night. Uh, booted this deck up. I've never played this version of it before and immediately got a 5 0. So I was like, well, I have to stream this at least at minimum for that reason. Um, also, some of the very cool people I know who are playing in Toronto were playing uh, this deck or a version of it. So. And we'll keep that. Um. So we do need to try to have triple red. Oh, that's so cool, JK Torborg. Already playing an instrument before playing drums is awesome. It's a great place to start. Okay, so we don't have one mana removal in this hand. Hopefully we rip one. Did not. Um... I'm going to go play, ahead and play Shivan Reef here because I might need this for a third red source. Well, uh, having a good idea of um, rhythm and musical form before you start playing drums is a really great place to be. It's going to make you a much more musical drummer. Um, yeah, we're, we're very behind here. I... Uh, 
Okay, so I think I'm taking Spike Field Hazard here to kill this Lanoir Elves, and hopefully we... I suppose the other option is just, like, jam Prismari Command to kill the Lanoir Elf and make a treasure or go for some card selection here. I'm pretty sure I'd be making a treasure because we just need to try to set up... What I need to do is find some stack interaction because they're going to have some of their heavy hitters coming in soon. This is more controlling than some other versions, and I really like that part of it. So maybe I'm just picking up a land here and we jam the Prismari command and try to cut off their land where else. If they play Karn on this board, it's not particularly scary. Um, although it can grab Stone Brain, which obviously is less than ideal for me. But we, we probably need this land more than anything else there. Okay. Um, so that's fine. So I can play this on red, but then I'm going to end up taking damage from pinging it anyway. Let's go ahead and shock, make a treasure. Uh, I suppose they could just play Karn and plus it to kill my treasure. That would not be a disaster, but it certainly wouldn't be easy for me to deal with. Definitely going to be a tricky game one against uh, Mono Green, but I did meet beat Mono Green last night. Uh, I'm fully confident we can take this matchup in general. It's possible they're missing a third land and they have some of their five drops. See that that's the really funny thing, Seeker. I played at least nine or ten rounds of Pioneer this weekend, and I didn't run into Red White once, but I did run into Grohl vehicles, and I crushed them. Uh, on the blue red Chandra deck, but it was really funny um, that there actually was a, a Grohl Vehicles deck in the top of the uh, American RC, I believe. So that deck made a resurgence, which I was not expecting. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's one of those decks that, like, I remember being really good in a fairly different era of this format. Um,. But I guess it's back. Did, did Grohl win the RC? Really? Wild. Grohl won Dallas. That's crazy. Yeah, I did have a Thrill Seeker punch me in the face for seven off of their, um, the Beast. All right, so I think we just Fable here, try next turn to draw into creativity, even though I don't think... Actually, you know what? I probably should have gone Prismari Command this turn to try to draw, like, a Negate in case they have Storm the Festival here. But uh, honestly, I'm feeling very far behind in a way that I don't think that we can come back. Um, but card selecting into a hard counter would have been the way to go here. Still haven't found it. There's the Nykthos. So they have access to 8 trillion mana now. And I have no negate. And no ability to get to, no, to a negate. Yeah. On the plus side, I think the way this turn went down that make disappear wouldn't have done anything all right we'll, we'll just scoop this one let's just go to game two we're just so far so far behind um i don't really know what matchup this is for by the way if anyone knows this deck better than me please let me know what is this for so I guess we get to bring in all of this. Um, Fire Impulse still good. Volcanic Spite still fine. Is it 
just Azoria? Yeah, like, it's just one of those things where it's like, a Hullbreaker Horror is also for Azorius, right? I can imagine bringing all these in and cutting the creativity plan, but then it's like... Uh, so I'm pretty sure what we're supposed to do here is something like this. Um, sorry, and we bring... We need this guy. Because I think... Putting out a Hullbreaker and just being able to cast cheap spells just destroys Mono Green. Trim Fables? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I, like, I can imagine bringing this in against red-black, I guess, because you can sacrifice the tokens that it's making to make it indestructible. But then you have an indestructible 6-6 that doesn't have any evasion and, like, I, doesn't affect Shieldred. It's just... I I don't get this card. I Yeah, I hope at some point someone explains to me. I think if I want to go this way, Chandra's probably fine. Chandra cleans up their boards pretty hard. So I'm going to cut a creativity. It might seem insane, but I think it's okay. Especially because we have just a ludicrous amount of card selection. We can cast the whole breaker. Okay, this is the ideal. I mean, not ideal, but like this is a great opener against Mono Green. Um, with the downside, and this is... I got killed by Mono Green in one of the matches uh, yesterday. I kept great hands against them, and then two out of three games, they just went land Oath of Nyssa, land um, Wolf Willow Haven, like, and then start casting three drops. And it was like, oh, well, these two fiery impulses and this one spike field hazard have no purpose now. Uh, awesome. And it's that is one of the things, and that's it's it just feels like uh, that's that's pioneer as a like it's a that's pioneer problem is sometimes that's just the way you draw out and that's the way your opponent draws out and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, I think I'm happy to trade this off at this point in the game. And if this knocks the wheels off the bus, Cam E No C O. Cam and Nico? Um, cool. Thank you, Seeker509. Come on, CO. Come on, come on. Yeah, that's tough for... I have no idea. Yeah, it should be... Come on, CO. Come on, CO. It's not Chio, because there's no... It's not double C. Let's get my third red. I I have a disdainful stroke, but they only had three lands. Oh, thank God. They found their fourth land. Karen? Nice. Thank you. Of course, if we draw creativity here, we haven't created a token yet, so that's not the best. We're going to hold on to the spike field hazard forever because we're, our current plan is to play... Um, Holebreaker Horrors, so we need cheap spells for afterwards. Is that Georgia, GA? Georgia? The great state of Georgia. Or is that Gat? Uh, it's not Germany, because that would be DU or DEU, I guess. I, I don't know how they, if they bring it down to two letters. The Peach State, yeah, baby. Georgia. Uh, I've only been to Atlanta, but I know people who live near Atlanta and Savannah. I know people who live in Savannah. The person I know who lives near Atlanta is 
a a, a dancer singer who 100 percent kind of like looks like and lives kind of the barbie lifestyle I don't know what to expect from a Georgia accent in the construction industry. Like, I know what that old sort of Georgia Colonel accent is, and it doesn't, apparently it doesn't really exist. Uh, it's just that she's like bubbly and wears a lot of pink and like likes Disney and cute things. She's just like the most girly girl that you've ever met. A bit more redneck. Got it, got it. A little bit less comprehensible. That's okay. I sound like every white person on television. That is that is my curse. Am I from New York? Am I from California? Oh, I'm from Toronto. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Draw, draw it up. They hit one more land. It's uh, this is gonna be a big problem. Yeah, a few more spike field hazards, and oh boy. <sighs> yeah, that, that's exactly how we spell loonies and toonies, actually. Wow! Just dead, huh? There, there's no single draw that can get us out of here. That's a shame. What a, what a silly way to lose. And then we had stuff coming. Uh, we'll be back as we're queued, but uh, I don't feel bad about that. It's just one of those things that happens. We, we lost on game one to having the wrong half of our deck, and then game two, that happened. Uh, it might be my fault for the way I sideboard it, but I don't feel particularly bad about it. Maybe. All right, on the draw, Fiery Impulse, and Interaction, let's go. Georgia surprisingly had the nutty magic scene. I think two locals qualified for the Pro Tour this weekend, and another was one win away. Nice. Okay, looks like maybe we found Black Red, which should be an okay matchup. Do I want interaction up for their three drop, or do I want fire impulse for their two drop? There's just a good chance that they're gonna have Bankbuster here on two. So and since we can't stop that, let's just go ahead and play the tap land, and then we'll have a chance of interacting with their threes with our stack interaction. Obviously, we want to see Blood Tithe Harvester here. Good. It's just a very low impact card in this matchup. Um and with the way my hand is shaped out, I think we'll be okay um, through through the beatdown. Trespasser. So let's rip a lance, please. Okay, that was really nice. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and jam Fable here. Am I? No, because I, I think if they just shielded right now, I fold. Right? I mean, I, then I would grab an Atraxa. If they have a removal spell for the Atraxa, I'm in real big trouble. Because uh, if they play a shoulder this turn, then I really don't get to rummage with my Fable. I mean, I can, but I'll take a ludicrous amount of damage. I think letting a shieldred resolve here would be a mistake, so let's just not. Uh, we get to remove this Blood Tithe Harvester this turn and not take the hit. Um... I don't see any particular reason to do it on my turn rather than on their turn. They don't play any of the modern effects that like bring stuff back. Typically. I mean, I'm sure some of them are legal. Croxa, that's low impact and totally fine. What am I ditching? Uh, either creativity, transmog. Transmog is already or obviously the worst version. And then if they have a follow-up thought sees, we can counter it. Oh. Okay. So this probably means they have a singular two mana piece of interaction would be my guess. Uh has my has their play or my draw changed my opinion about losing to Shieldred? No. Ah, you know what? I don't think we can play around it forever. So they shocked in here. I wonder if they have one mana removal and they want to use the blood token. Wouldn't be surprised the thought sees. No. Okay. That's great for us. So this means I get an Atraxa this turn, unless they push my Goblin before I attack. Thanks for the follow. Confirmed Trout's... Duffalo? Interesting. Confirmed Trout's Double Doubt Follow? Something like that. That is, that is a name. So I'm ditching Prismari Command here, and Nagate, I think. Have enough red. Go to combat. Yeah, okay. Wouldn't be surprised to see a block here. Yep. I'm gonna guess they don't have a one mana way to interact with my treasure token, so let's just put an attracts in play. Yeah. You shall be complete. All right. Oh, we do get a sorcery. That's hot. Uh, an enchantment that and land. Perfect. We'll leave the attracts in. Okay. I guess I could have grabbed the Fiery Temper there as a one-mana piece of interaction to have on their turn, but I think I'm happy to have Prismari Command at this point. I already had one, though. Maybe it was grab the Fiery Impulse. It likely doesn't matter, but... Black Red is an obscene deck. It's very, very good. So... It is silly to be overconfident. They can get Croxa back this turn, but that means they're definitely not killing my Atraxa. Also, Atraxa's an angel, right? Which means power word kill, which is, I, I assume, what they were trying to cast there. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's messed up. Um, okay. I don't think I want change the equation. I don't think I want disdainful stroke. I don't think I want to get, I think the amount of sideboarding for this matchup is minimal. I think this just feels really good. Yeah, I could, I could see bringing in one Hallbreaker Horror. Brotherhood's end over two Fireys. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I support that. Fireys generally very low impact in this matchup. Like, you don't want to use it on Bone Crusher. You don't want to use it on Graveyard Trespasser. Really, the only target it has is... Um, uh, Blood Tithe Harvester. And Blood Tithe Harvester is not a frightening card. Like, it's, it's just not going to clock you on its own. Uh, whereas Brotherhood's End can kill both uh, Reckoner Bankbuster, Blood Tokens. Uh, oh, and I guess in third, like, if they brought in Unlicensed Hearse, which, again, our, our build is not... This build... Uh, not our build. This build is not afraid of Hearse, but that doesn't mean they won't bring it in, and sometimes it's just a big fatty. Yeah. Okay. We do have Prismari Command, though, 4x in this deck, so that's great for dealing with Bank Busters. I actually really like that. Uh, yeah. Whatever you want, opponent. The thing is, this build, man, short four shark typhoon main is just so good. It just it gives you so much game uh, against matchups where I feel like creativity is a little soft. Because these creativity decks often they're playing like prismari commands and or big scores. There's lots of things that like make motion, but they don't actually increase the number of cards you have access to. Okay, so we're gonna go volcanic spite brotherhoods end here and feel really great uh, about our position this game. Yeah, I'll, I'll take four. It's fine. I'm going to probably rummage away one of these impulses just because I don't feel like I have time. It's a fine draw. On the flip side, I have no way to interact with the children if that's what they cast here. We're just going to have to play through. Yeah, but there's only one Chandra, right? I think it's just like a sideways potential win condition in the post board. It's there for the grindy matchups, quote unquote, hashtag joke. Just spouting streamer nonsense. Uh, but just, it's not, this deck is not particularly, yeah, like, well, the most bad card is Prismari Command, and it really seems totally reasonable in the metagame, so it's like, okay. It's a bad card, but it's not a bad card, you know? It's a bad guy, but not a bad guy. Do I care about any of my cards here? No, go ahead. I assume they're taking Impulse or Shark Typhoon. If they take Negate, I guess that means they have a second Fable. That's the only thing I can imagine. Um, I'm not... So they took the Shark Typhoon. I guess it's because it's potential two for one. I'm not interested in just naked jamming uh, a um, creativity here, but I am interested in this Chandra because I am one land away from casting it. If we hit the lands, oh, that's a perfect draw. If we hit the lands, it's right on time for Chandra to come in and take uh, clean up both halves of the Fable. I won't be able to protect her on that turn, so she might go down for that. But it's one of the better uses of Chandra that I'm likely to have. Um, with Just with the way this particular game is going. 
So now we're primed for like if we top deck creativity, they they have to respect the top deck creativity right now, but um they're getting a little low on resources. Although their board's pretty good right now. I really don't want to see a shield right here, because that's gonna make me like just trade my entire Chandra for it. Um but I mean Ten. Please no. Yeah. Okay. This turn cycle's gonna hurt. Do I want to select at all here? Actually, I probably won't have to trade my whole Chandra. But they've got Den, so she's going to die anyway. It's fine. Uh, we're not going to discard anything here. And then we're going to go to combat attack with this. I assume they're going to block with the Shieldred, and then that means Chandra gets to come in and clean up. Don't Fatal Push me. That will end this game. <laughs> Don't Fatal Push me. Don't do it. I know you want to. Don't. Don't do it. Thank you. So I have to leave them one of the two goblins. I think I'd rather leave them with Reflection for one turn and take the risk that they draw, like, a good 3-drop to team up with. Um, yeah, I don't get to keep Chandra at all here, but that's okay. Six mana life buffer. I mean, double removal spell. Pretty reasonable. Uh oh. Okay, good, good. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Drawing an Atrax is fine, because it gives me something to rummage with this Prisbari command. So I'm not concerned about that. I guess if they boot up High of Ithe Tyrant, that's like... Shock. What the hell? Perfect. Deal two, draw two, discard two. Chalk. Really? Uh, I suppose. Right, reflection's not doing much for me at this point. It's a lot more frightening on their side of the battlefield. <clears throat> Good draw. Good draw. Good draw. Anybody? 
Anybody looking for a good draw? Not a great draw. So on a two turn clock to this hive of the high tyrant. Definitely my favorite place to be. Okay. On a one turn clock to this hive of the eye tyrant plus blood tithe harvester. I mean not really. If they attack with both, I guess I can mute a vault block, but don't love them having a blood token. Come on. Straw straw payoff. Come on, baby. That's not a payoff. But it is a way to kill a uh, Hive of the Eye Tyrant, so that's not the worst. Uh, for the Mirex believers in chat, uh, that would have been doing stuff here and setting me up for a unsolvable creativity against them. So uh, I would say this this game is an example of one one plus one point for the Mirex. Uh, I can't throw away this Mutavolt right now. I think I need it too much. I think we'll just impulse here. I guess if they have a removal spell, is Mutavolt where Murex would be? I believe so. Uh, this deck is playing two copies of Mutavolt, which I've not seen before. Let's go to five. I'm okay with it. Uh, the other versions I've seen typically play one. Two cards in hand. At least one of them's got to be spot removal. Let's draw Secrets of the Key. That'd be gross here. Traxa. Okay, so that's the second attracts us. So the only thing left in the deck to creativity into is Holebreaker Horror, which is not really where I want to be. That's okay. Sometimes when you play creativity, you draw like this. Yeah, I, I believe that to be the case, Seeker. It seems like a good card to me. It beat me on... I was playing... I think I was playing the Blue-Red Chandra deck, and I lost to a Murex just being gross when I wasn't playing any Field of Ruins, or it didn't draw a Field of Ruin. So, it it's not that I don't think it's a good card. I do. It's just that this version was very good for me last night, and chooses to play the Mutavolt. And there are reasons you'd want to choose the Mutavolt. It's a lot faster, right? And there are a lot of games, I feel like. Yeah, that's the thing, is like, there's a lot of times where Mutavolt fits into a sequence in a way that the Murex can't. Um, it's also a 2-2 blocker, which is not irrelevant. Are you playing RCQs this season? Nah, not uh, intentionally on a heater. You are Belfi. I know you're Belfi. Um, the reason that I'm not is because I won't be here for the RC. So there's just no point. Uh, I will be working. Let's go to four. Double stomp territory. Good draw. Good enough. Solves the goblin problem. The goblin? Pro the problem? Getting thoughts east? Yeah. They got it. I have to. There's no point in letting that resolve. Get out of here. Trying Hullbreaker? Uh, yeah. Hullbreaker would have been fine. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that would have been fine, right? I don't. <laughs> I think there's so many good draws in the deck at this point. It's like... Shark Typhoon. Impulse. Impulse. 
Fable, Prismaric Command. That one copy of Secrets of the Key. Wow, they're um, really mourning that goblin. I don't know Nine Serethis. Uh, Setheris? Setheris. Setheris? Setheris? I don't know. Uh, they're definitely not attacking with it. And that sure is a choice. Um I think they're concerned about it just getting killed and like them having spent an entire turn, quote unquote, to get nothing. Okay. I would assume they're going to feel pressured enough to make this attack now. Last game they had the Crocs, so this game they don't. Oh, yeah, that's that's lethal. Okay, go on to game three. So we were going to draw for turn. I could draw two more. Uh, okay, we, were, we still weren't getting there. I mean, I probably would have kept the Shark Typhoon, which would have been fine. Ish. Uh, do I want to sideboard differently? No? I don't think so. Why didn't you block with Mutavault? Because Mutavault was the only thing I had to uh, creativity. And if I top deck to creativity, I needed to have the option to cast it. I thought that was a priority. Yeah, this is fine. Got a lot of chunky cards in it, but we're on the play. We have selection. I think this is fine. It It is really strange that one of the effects that I feel like I want in this deck is something that just like shuffles my graveyard back into my library. It's... Very strange to feel that way, but it's like. Takes the Prismari command. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so that's a good draw, because that means this impulse does no longer feels pressured to grab me just a land. That is a slow card against us, so feeling feeling good on a Wednesday. Let's grab Fable. That's insane. Thank you, deck. Let's draw another land. Come on, baby. Come on now. Oh, that's so good. It's almost tempting to go shatter, make a treasure, but I feel like, I mean, the, the 
scenario where they make me regret not doing that is what they play fatal push and then just activate the bank buster and that's like fairly low impact here so okay so discard atraxa and am i discarding the chandra I don't think so. I think it's a fine card to play towards right now. Second painless red is not a bad thing to have. Just go ahead and pass. <sighs> Am I leaving this bank buster in play? I don't think so, because there's a chance that they go untap, shieldred, crew, bankbuster, attack, and I don't I don't think there's a good reason to leave the bankbuster in here. Just just want to go shatter, make a treasure. Get out of here. There's always a chance we get to go untap, cast Shark Typhoon. <laughs> just just chuckle. Um, with the downside being, if they're able to get rid of every single spell in my hand, then we're just doomed. No play here is phenomenal. And we got the land. Enjoy all your beans, Larynx Punchworthy. Thanks for the resub. As always, it's never necessary, but if you like what I do here, or if you just like the emotes and you want to take advantage of all the fantastic Simpsons emotes, you can always subscribe here at the Mana Symbol channel. For the moment, <laughs> let's figure out what I'm doing here. They do play Dreadboard Coligan's Command. I'm not really... I'm, I'm not going to creativity. There's no... I don't think there's any world in which I cast creativity here. I think that would be very silly. Um, I guess the, the only reason to do it would be because I can X2, but again, Coligan's Command blows that out, or just two removal spells, right? It's just really easy for them to have. I, obviously, one of, them have, one of them has to interact with the treasure. I think I'm play, supposed to just play Chandra and plus one. Putting her to six is fine. It probably gets me a spell uh, and a six... Six loyalty planeswalker is like if they have dread boar specifically, which is not a great card in this matchup, yeah, they can remove it, but then I still get the two for one. That's true. If you have uh Amazon Prime, you can get your sub here 100% free, you get one every month. And even if you don't want to spend it here, this is not a good Chandra uh activation. Even if you don't want to spend it here, make sure you spend it somewhere because Jeff De Bezos doesn't need any more money. Get that money. What's happening? What are we doing? Two mana. Stomp. Okay. Has been stamped. Oh, that's what people mean by a stamped card. I get it now. I'm an old man and I I don't keep up with the trends, so I just I just didn't understand. Okay, so we could double brothers right to brotherhoods end this. Um or I can go double impulse and then if I hit a land, I can just play Shark Typhoon. Have an eight loyalty Chandra in play. I think this Brotherhood's End is just not getting cast because it'll it'll kill my Chandra if I do damage to creatures. Uh... So double impulse. See where that gets me. 
Should I just use it off the Chandra mana? Probably. I'm not using it for anything else this turn. Yeah, I'm not. Double Impulse. Nagate? Or do I just want the land? I think it's fine. I suppose at this point I can just play Protect the Queen and the Queen is Chandra, which we all know Chandra is definitely the Queen. Uh, also, she casts Hullbreaker Horror next turn. Okay, so we're going to cycle Shark Typhoon for one here and block Bone Crusher and then negate any relevant spell. Seems fine. Seems like a choice, you know. Uh... Do it. Think I can just let Chandra take four this turn? If they play any follow-up, it's like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Chandra at six loyalty means if they play a Shieldred, I just blow up Shieldred in the Bone Crusher. Oh. Also, we just drew that. Why Noi cast Brotherhood? Because if I do, I would get two copies of Brotherhood. And I guess I could have cast it after the Impulse. But it deals three to Chandra. It would have cleared the Bone Crusher. Maybe that was better than what I'm doing now. And then I'd still have the mana for Negate. Yeah, actually, that's probably a good idea. I should have gone Impulse into uh, one copy of Brotherhood's End. Because it's the second spell. Yeah. Yeah, okay. That's uh, No, that's a good idea. And I probably should have done it. I'd have Chandra at five, but they'd have no Bone Crusher. Yeah, that's probably something I should have done. Did not did not consider that the way the sequence worked out, but it's definitely something I should have done. One red, one black. Buster. Uh, yeah. Might as well jump. I will counter the Buster twice. Oh no, my negate. Fizzled. So if I bless Chandra for mana, I can cast the whole breaker, but not have any spells left over. If I bless her to look at cards, I think it's the highest upside here. Oh, there we go. So we have a Volcanic Spite to deal with the Bone Crusher, and that's fine. We can take a little bit of damage. Let's just go double impulse again. Oh, wait, that's not how that works. I don't get all of them. That's fine. We'll probably find a removal spell. Uh, Zach. Sometimes you're so silly. I already have creativity. Fable's gonna give me many creativity targets. Honestly, I think I just need the land. Hit me the removal. Uh, I like Mutavolt here. Sets me up for an easy creativity. So let's go any order this. Steam vents tapped. Pass the turn. Got Make Disappear. They have to do something else to clear my Chandra. Which I can probably interact with. And if they leave themselves open, we just get to Creativity X2 and put an Atraxa and a Hullbreaker Horror into play. 
I don't have the second creativity target, but we'll get one of them at minimum. I'd like to put my Chandra to one. Deal. So I can double make disappear this and just counter it. So I suppose I will. At minimum, we can also just cast Hullbreaker Horror next turn. Pay four. They did not. It's got to be a stomp, right? Yep. So I think this turn cycle, it's play Hullbreaker and then untap creativity. Don't, I didn't feel pressured to play my creativity into their untapped black. Should be game. <clears throat> no attack. Good read from opponent. Doesn't matter, but it was a good read. So let's go attack for seven, then creativity X2. And I have fiery impulse to like basically clean up their entire board and protect the creativity. And the reason we're going to creativity here is I'm going to get another hole breaker horror, but also I'm going to get an Atraxa, which is going to draw me a million cards, which um, should make this completely out of reach for them. It is theoretically possible that after I do that, they could like extinction event. And if I somehow didn't have a spell to play, then I might be in trouble. Oh, they, they don't. You board in the second horror. I did do. At least I'm pretty sure I did. Maybe I didn't. Can't remember. No, no. Can I, if I view sideboard? Uh, no, I didn't. All right, so we should have gone for one there, which actually would have been even better. So something I should have checked before I did it. But you said one before the second game, and I was the thing that I was considering between game two and three was if I wanted a second horror to have four payoffs, but two of them be castable. Technically, Atrax is castable in this deck, but uh, because we're not playing big scorer, it's harder to get two treasures, like, easily. I'm used to playing big scorer in these decks. Not that that's... Not that I'm saying you should. I'm just saying I'm used to it. I think the amount that big score doesn't contribute to the battlefield is pretty rough. Yagantha. So that could be the Boros deck, or that could be um, Vehicles, or it could be Jund. Well, I think the Jund deck wants to play Liliana. Anyway, uh, we have no interaction in the early game here. I think this is a very silly cant to keep, because I think we just get run over. This is much better. Thank you, deck. Also, I enjoy that my opponent's name is Playmobil. I unplugged my microphone for a second, but I think it's okay. Seize my thoughts, opponent. 
Tell me what kind of game we're playing. I take the fire impulse. Okay. So this game might be a good example. Not yet. We obviously don't. I don't obviously don't know. But this game might end up being a good example of why Mutavolt is good over Murex. Um, because it's going to give me an opportunity to go for an earlier creativity than the Murex would. Um, not necessarily saying that's where this game is going, but it could be. It also puts me at risk of being down a land, so six of one, half a dozen of the other. Careful cultivation. Yeah. All right. Are they about to do something unfair? Or is this a fair careful, careful cultivation deck? I don't think those words exist. I've definitely seen careful cultivation in decks before, but usually they're playing red. We haven't seen any red mana yet. Doesn't mean they don't have it. There it is. So if they go transmog here, they get whatever it is that they're looking for. Oh, chariot. Interesting. Okay. Seems vaguely mid rangey. Uh, certainly a matchup where I'm wishing I had a main deck sweeper to draw into. That's all right. There's no reason to be upsetty spaghetti about any of that. I uh, need our triple red. Cast Fable, yeah. Uh, there's a very good chance they're playing some kind of removal, but it's fine. Oh, this could be the, like, four-color Attracts a Transmogrify deck, right? I don't know what that deck looks like at all, but it certainly could be. Oh, that's cool. Making a copy of your mana, Monk. That's cool. Big fan of that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, looks like I'm kind of on the right tack. Certainly seems like they're winning so far. Whoa. Wow. Woof. I'm going to go ahead and say we're dead here. Um, yeah, let's just go game two. Combo deck comboed us. Um, let's grab some change the equations. Am I supposed to go full control deck here? I want to say that I am. Seems I don't know about this. I mean... I think I'm going this way. I did this last night in a couple of matchups and it felt pretty good.
no Necromancer in their deck because they still have access to Iagantha. Um, they could be playing like Slaughter Games or something of that nature. So doesn't necessarily mean we're safe from Necromancer effects. The question is, if they did play it, I would probably just let it resolve because I'm not worried about them making the appropriate call when um, when I've sideboarded the way I have. We're not going to tap down for Fable here just because they have end step guy into untapped transmog. We got to play this slower and more controlling, and that's fine. I think we are ideally set up for it. Certainly with this hand. Do I want a second negates? Yeah. Kind of interested in the land there. Deep down in my soul, Wafo Tapa is uh, nodding and smiling uh, because I considered the land, but what do I draw means we're in good shape. They've cast no spells. <laughs> But boy, boy, am I set up for most of the things that that I think that they can do. It's just fun. It just, it feels wrong for me to say Odawara. Like, that just doesn't, I don't know. It doesn't have any punch to it, you know? It's not, not sexy. Okay, so they have Mirex. So in this kind of matchup, that's definitely something to watch out for. What is this? Three mana, double black. It's nothing. Okay. Don't hate that draw. Get this Fable going. Yikes! My throat! Chariot. I think Disdainful Stroke is the worst counter in this matchup. I think Negate probably hits more things that I'm afraid of. Do I want to discard any of these cards? This land is can probably go. I also don't think I need this primary command at the moment. It's like medium minus. Eh. Should I get the land? Uh, jam second fable and just assume that setting up double fable might be how we win this game. I don't feel safe with just this negate, but also I feel like most of their token generation does isn't too cheap. So if they have a Thoughtseize here, that's fine because they also have to have a cheap way to make a token if they want to transmog. Uh, yeah, you can have this. I'm not resolving this negate this turn if they don't want me to. So, And uh, I can at least cast the Secrets of the Key and get one Investigate done. Okay, that's I discard both of these. We need to find interaction. We gotta dig as deep as possible, even though again the land is tempting to keep. There we go. Okay, good stuff. Love that for me. Fable mid-range, let's go. Uh, playing these decks this weekend, though, good god is Fable... When you're playing Fable and other things that makes make tokens in your deck, 
uh, like I'm used to playing creativity in modern where it's like fable and then also you have like dwarf tokens and that's kind of the limit of uh, stuff. Um, so let's crack the clue first. If I counter this, it protects my secrets of the key. But I don't think it's worthwhile. I think I just have to uh, discard everything except make disappear here. I could play the impulse and see if I hit, but that, that I don't have enough mana to play a different counter spell. I guess if I play the impulse and I hit the gate, I could negate this, but then I'm open to them going land transmog. So I think we just have to go discard, discard, lose the graveyard. It's not the end of the world. We're not playing any delve spells, so. Just gotta not get comboed out at the moment. So a real shame they had to go blank there because the um the secrets of the key was gonna be able to draw me two cards fairly soon, uh, in that uh I have a lot of extra mana coming via reflections and goblin shaman. That is a great draw. I hear not getting combat is always positive. I mean Six of one, half a dozen of the other. Agree to disagree. Are the transmogrify index Jun Grixis real? I think so. Um, dream dreams of Ashiok. Ashiok, the streamer who he doesn't stream too much right now, but he does play a lot of Magic, a lot of Pioneer. He's uh, very talented at the format. He believes in these decks, so that makes me think that there's probably something to them. Yeah, I don't know if they're better than blue-red. Okay, so the question here is, do I just, like, try to go for the make reflections? I think so, because if they have removal for it, it probably is the same removal that would destroy my Hullbreaker Horror. Yeah, like, that would destroy my Hullbreaker Horror, so this is fine. Good draw. Uh, now I can freely do this. You got more? You got you got more opponent? They do not. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know if these decks are better than blue red. They're definitely different. They definitely have access to some some cards that you don't in blue red, and I don't know if that's better or worse. Five. Oh, this is just casting Gigantha? That's fine. Okay. I'd rather just cast this now uh, and see if they still have more removal. They've got exactly one card in hand. Nope, they do not. Okay. So... Uh, copy horror, cast shark typhoon, bounce your dudes. Kill ya. Bang. C -c 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 Controlled. So, I didn't see anything there that makes me think that this sideboard plan is bad.
Not sure how good Brotherhood's End is to have here, but I don't see great other sideboard options. And like being able to sweep up a bunch of cats and tokens like we saw in game one is something that I want access to. Ooh, they're really struggling on the sideboard. Hold on. I hear my laundry being funny. Oh, they're, uh, yeah, they took, they used all their clock on that sideboarding. Uh, keep. I do not own the new Zelda. Um, I kind of am making a promise to myself that I'm not going to buy the new Zelda until I at least beat Breath of the Wild, which I know is not the point of Breath of the Wild, which was kind of the... I really liked Breath of the Wild, and I played it a bunch. Like, I'd say I put uh, probably 20 hours into it. The thing is, I, a lot of open-world games are just not for me. Um, I find... I think I'm letting this resolve. I find in open world games that I it's very difficult for me to be motivated to do things. Uh, they seem to be the Junda Tracks deck, yeah. I enjoy just like exploring and chilling, and but like, and I started to find little bits of the story, and then it's like the game doesn't care if I care. So, I, yeah, I just, I don't think I've ever played, like, an open world game and actually gotten particularly far in it. Like, I never... None of the Elder Scroll games really appeal to me. Uh, um, the what was the other one, uh, Fallout. I've had no no success at going particularly far in Fallout. Uh, um, like Bioshock is a little bit more my speed. Um, uh, all the Dark Knight games that I played, the Batman Arkham Asylum, those were phenomenal. Um, on this recent cruise contract, I was beating basically as many Phoenix Wright games 
uh, as I could. Um, I think this fable's resolving, unfortunately. I can grab a Brotherhood's End, though. I mean, I could make Disappear. That's probably worthwhile. Fable's so much value. Yeah, I just, I like things that are a little bit more linear. Uh, the original Zeldas, the the, the quote-unquote real Zeldas, I and not I think I think you all understand what I mean when I'm saying when I say Breath of the Wild is not a quote-unquote real Zelda game, if only because Zelda is a, uh, a franchise that's existed for like uh, what twenty-five years and is very formulaic, um, which could theoretically be a downside, but it hasn't been in my experience. It, 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 like with Pokemon, it's definitely felt like a downside where it's like. Uh, yes, we're going to get a starter out of three selections, almost always fire, grass, and water, and then, oh, we're going to go through eight gyms and sometimes 16, and there's not really a lot of plot, and if there is, it's like, oh, there's a Team Rocket. Oh, it's not Team Rocket, it's the other team, but they're basically Team Rocket, and they want to take over the world! Like, where Zelda's had a little bit more breadth in terms of how the games have uh, stretched what a Zelda game is meant to be. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about my position here. It's Team Socket. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're mechanically themed this time. They fix stuff and they make go-karts. Is there a go-kart racing video mini game? No, no, this is Pokemon. No, 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 this, this, this is Pokemon. We don't do that. So specifically duress or Thoughtseize into Transmog or something like that could be dangerous here. I think I bounce back from that, though. We'll see. Oh. Oh, my. This is casting a Traxa. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's not happening. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's fine. Yeah, uh, Pokemon Legends definitely, I wouldn't say, is one of the mainstream title Pokemon games. So I guess in that, in their own way, they're doing the same thing as they did in uh, in Zelda. They did retire Ash as the anime protagonist. I mean, it's been like 20 years. So. And Ash wasn't the protagonist for at least one season, right? I, I remember at least one series where they like went to a different place and it wasn't Ash anymore. It was someone else. Okay, so we just need to find a window to cast this Hullbreaker. Imagine trying to spend 25 years to try to win a world championship, and when you do, they retire you. I mean, I don't, I don't feel like that's a, a bad comparison like that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I can change the equation this, and I probably should. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but they can't cast a Traxa because they need white and blue. If they transmog, I have enough burn to just kill. Yeah. Okay, should be fine. Okay. Let's make a shark. Just a just a little one, yeah. Suddenly you're free free. Okay. 
Thanks. Good draw. Even better draw. Okay, so now we have Hullbreaker Horror plus uh, a one mana spell. And that is going to seal the deal on this game. So I think switching to the control plan was good here. Uh, it certainly seemed to work out for me. And that's one of the things I really like about this version is it switches to a control plan so well because it's already playing four main deck shark typhoons. Um, Prismari Command is just an okay card in the meta right now. It's not great, but it's certainly... Bless his own. Tear asunder. Okay. Um, if I bounce it back, they just recast it. So we got to go Fiery Impulse, bounce the horror. Which is fine. The horror goes back in its shell. Uh, I probably could attack for three there. Yeah, I should have done. There's really no reason not to. I mean, I'm probably jumping this turn with the shark. <laughs> They're off it. So we had a rough opening match against green, but everything now feels pretty good. Okay. On the play. Got the fiery impulse. It's good enough for me. Uh, we can't both draw a two mana piece of interaction and a second untapped land, so I'm going to lead on Stormcarved Coast. In case we do draw a two mana piece of interaction or two mana spell and they don't lead on a one drop. Okay, it looks like pseudo mirror, if not actual mirror. Uh, I'll do that. One thing I really liked about the blue red Chandra deck is it was playing no Spire Bluff canals, canals, and. Um, Obviously, this version has some motivation to do so, but I think you could be playing Shevin Reef instead. And for me, the the small number of damage points is not uh, frightening compared to the... Um, I'll just cycle this now. I need interaction. Um, I don't see anything disastrous happening here. Um I think the small number of points of damage I've taken out of... Oof. Not the draw in this matchup that you want, because if they make a treasure token and just try to go off here, I'm in trubs. Um, but we don't know what build they're on at the moment, so it's entirely possible that they're on Gear Hulks, which... Yep.
the moment what we want to do is keep hitting land drops, obviously. Ugh. Ah, creativity. Sometimes. Sometimes you draw the very wrong half of your combo control deck. Just pray that it doesn't happen too many times in the matchup. With great power comes great ability to draw clunky cards. I mean, that's fine if we ever get a target. Uh, I want to be able to build Naya Winota with the Lord of the Rings cards. Yeah, there's certainly some good ones for that deck. The Mana Dork especially, right? Although, is it, it's a Halfling, right? Which means it's not a human. Kind of Pog. All right. We're not we're not doomed yet. We haven't started discarding the hand size. Just cast in a gear hulk? Ah, uh, shark. Okay. Halfling and the AO cousins. AO cousins. Oh, AO Mirror and AO Win? Is that is that what we're talking about? Talk about All Right, AO Win and AO Mer. Yeah. Just do it. Just 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 boot up the mutable and creativity me. Come on. Nothing bad's gonna happen. No? Alright. Cuties of Rohan, to me! I think they've drawn the better chunk of their deck. I, I have a suspicion that they're drawing a little bit better than us right now. Please respond. Thanks for follow Johnny JB. Nagate. All right. Well, it's only one thing to do at a time like this. Let's see you jam, sucker. You got nothing on me. Let's see you jam, sucker. Maybe they won't have enough interaction, says increasingly nervous fan. No, they did. Ah, oh, it's a disaster. Uh, Mirex, of course, would have been very, very superior in this matchup to Mutavault. So you've seen at least twice where I felt like Mirex would be really good. And I think a very minimal number of times where Mutavault's actually been that great. So... Starting to lean more in the direction of Mirax. I do think it's insane to play two colorless sources in the 22 land deck that's playing creativity. So I I think I would go down to one, one colorless land, and it would be a Mirax. It's cur currently my feeling on the matter. Opponent ditched their transmogrify. Probably means they just have creativity plus uh, a counter. Uh, X2 creativity. That's a good play. Yeah, 
Uh, oh, X1. Wow. So they definitely have the counter. We're just going to see what version they're on. They're on Atraxa. Let's see the top 10 cards. Yeah, it looks like they're on the exact same deck as us, basically. The question will be, will they sideboard the same way that I do? Which is, I think I'm going for the control deck again. I don't need the Brotherhood's End in this matchup. I do not get this card. I don't know what that's there for, but that's okay. Comas for mono green? Really? That doesn't make any sense to me. You put in a coma. You use your one serpent to turn off their Nykthos? Yeah, I mean, I get it, but, like, also, I feel like format knowledge should... Like, at this point, I know Pioneer well enough that it should be, if not obvious, clear. <laughs> like, what... I just don't feel like turning off one of their cards is good enough in a game where you're behind. And maybe that's not the point of it. Coma's, like, pretty insane versus... But it... it you get one Serpent, right? On the first turn where you pass, that's it. Like, you have to turn off the Nykthos. Yeah, but if they have another Nykthos, which happens, I know it also turns off Planeswalkers. I get it, but you only get to turn off one thing. Like, if they're set up, wouldn't you rather just, like, worm them for 15? Or, sorry, for 30? Because that might be just immediately lethal. And Mono Green has no ability to play against that. Oh, it comes in turn four. Yeah, but the the other thing kills them on turn five. Which obviously is not super easy to set up, but like, I don't know. It just I, I just I'm I just don't get it. And that's fine. Like maybe what I need to do is just play the matchup and put the card in and just see that it works. But it I it it doesn't work in my brain. Yeah, I understand that it makes a big difference. And I I guess Oh, I, I completely believe that it works. Yeah, I just, I don't know. It, it's just, it just, it's very strange to me, but I, I believe it works. I believe your plan is a functional plan. It just, maybe it's the fact that you expect them not to have been set up because you've done a, such a good job of interacting with their stuff. Yeah, even after the RCs, it, it feels like there's a lot of space to experiment and uh, make decks. Like, there's the new quote-unquote inverter deck. It's really more of a Splinter Twin situation. Um, which I, I know a lot of people aren't going to see the difference between, and that's fine, I don't care. Um, but uh, that deck couldn't be tested on online at all. Sad, it's the only way to actually interact well against green, otherwise you're such an underdog. Interesting. I don't... I'm not really sure I get that, because I just feel like when I was playing Spike's Mono Red Creativity deck, like, sideboarding into the worm plan and just going, like, burn, 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 like, just interact with all your stuff until I X2 and kill you. Just, it felt like that was a very reasonable, functional way to play the game. Get to work a little shock.
Yeah, I, I get it. Like, I, 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 there's definitely a lot of different ways to do it. I think my inclination would be to swap the comas for uh, World Spine Worm plus Xenagos, but that doesn't mean it's correct. That I'm not saying that I know more than that team. I very, very deeply respect a lot of the players on that team, and I think they are probably better than me, right? Um, but it is... Wanted to see a creativity there. So they can pay for this make disappear. So I think I'm letting this fable resolve. Which is fine. Like I can definitely play through the fable here. Do I have a card I want to bottom right now? I think it's Fiery Impulse. We just play Volcanic Spite. Maybe I need this Fiery Impulse in case they boot up their Mutavolt. Yeah. I, I understand that, yeah. That, that, that feels really wrong, right? Like, using two sideboard slots and it only works on one matchup is definitely not uh, a fun place to be. But Mono Green is such a big part of the metagame, it's, it's pretty worthwhile, right? Like, if you were going to pick... There's two decks that you would pick to do that for. It's red, black, and mono green. So it's not necessarily a bad thing if this deck just has game against everything else, which it feels like it does. Really frustrating. Yep, you got your fable. They're still on creativities. I'm just not drawing the part of my deck that I need to right now. Which is, I mean, that's just magic being magic. Okay. If. Yeah, I just don't I don't think using two sideboard slots on that much of an upgrade is a is a good enough thing to do, right? But like and being that much of a dog against mono green seems rough. Just because it's so pervasive in the format. I very much feel dead here. And boy did I not board in the Brotherhood's ends that would help me for this exact situation. So, didn't stay on creativity, and my opponent did stay on creativity, but mid-ranged me out anyway. Which makes me think maybe that, that we were supposed to stay on creativity, and you just fight this matchup like you're both playing combo control. Which is fine. Like, I'm, I'm learning.
That is not good enough, unfortunately. Yeah. Which is fine. So if you're supposed to stay on combo control, probably split the hull breakers and Atraxas. Definitely take out the Transmogrify. Last scene on Rakdos Sacrifice. All right. Uh, no. Okay. It's not great. And we are a reasonably low land count deck for the strategy. Feel It feels like it. It feels like 22 plus 3 spike field caves is not enough for me. Um... But again, you have a lot of card selection once you get up to three mana, so it's probably fine. Any thoughts? Ease? Yes, we are. Okay. Probably taking one of the two mana interaction spells. If I had to guess. Transmogrify does not interact with Prismari Command particularly well. Uh, this is another match where Prismari Command main deck is good, though, because you get to destroy Witch's Ovens. So, okay, they take the good draw. Take the Prismari command. Do need to find, well, we don't actually need to find red sources if the card we're going to play here is the Prismari command. Definitely not countering a Cauldron Familiar because it can just keep coming back, no problem. If there's an oven here, we want to counter that. No oven. Spiked is a nice pickup. Kills Mayhem Devil. Yeah, that's the name of the card. Not attacking. Very conservative. Uh, if I shoot this, they might just have the treasure making card. So we'll just go ahead and pass. Just hope to draw land. Didn't draw the land, but that's okay. They also missed their land drop, so I'm not feeling too poorly. And if they go here, Deadly Dispute, that's the name of the card. If they Deadly Dispute here, are probably going to counter it. Snap off the negate. Yeah. Land? Uh, Shark Typhoon is fine enough. Means if we hit a land, then we get to Transmog here. Oh, hey, 13. Thanks for the follow. Unless that's Poheb. Which kind of looks like an anagram of Phoebe. Okay, so they exile the top two. They hit lands. Do I want to counter this? So then they have two mana left over. They're always going to have one mana left over. Or do I want to try to spike the transmog here? Spike the land, I guess. All right, let's let this resolve. Let's get frisky. I'm not necessarily going to jam, even if I do hit the land, just because there's a chance that they just have a Fatal Push. All right. I'm pretty sure them playing nothing here means they have the push, which is fine. They're slowing down their game plan to make sure that I don't auto-win, which is reasonable. 
Uh, and now... Feeling good on a Wednesday. Got make disappear here, which is noise. Claim the firstborn. Do I volcanic spite this in response? I think I do. Although the question is what their fault what's their follow-up here? Because if they play deadly dispute, we just make disappear that. Alright, fine. You can take my shark. You want him? You got him. Never like that shark anyway. Eyes. Dead eyes like a doll. Yeah, it's definitely a deadly dispute. Zamari Command is what I'm looking for here. Because I still don't have the third red. We'll just see how this shakes out. Okay. Should be good enough. Pretty sure I go make a treasure, destroy target artifact. No, I don't need to do that. No, we don't cast this. I don't need to. Let's make a 2-2 two -two shark. Destroying the treasure token doesn't matter when they have this much open mana. Making the treasure token might matter, but I don't have the third red, so let's try to draw into it. I would have top decked it anyway, but that's not really how I want to live my life right now. Uh, can afford a second colorless here. Let's get frisky. The fourth deadly dispute. Good gravy. High the eye tyrant and blood tithe harvester. Yeah, you got it. Setting up to creativity here, so I would love not to get thoughts eased. Because we can make the token. Yep. So I can kill my shark token for free, but that's fine.
Get this guy out of here. See if they're interested in sacking their treasures. I assume they won't be. Get rid of this. Let's go create a treasure and draw two discard two. So I don't need this many lands. Red, 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 one. Cannot imagine they have an out for this in game one. Because they could be playing a couple copies of a braid. Yeah, they're not. Get creativity. Fiery impulse. I can't cast that right now. So Prismari Command is probably better. So Kenzen is probably the best land. And I have an enchantment. Uh, we're leaving the attractions in. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. Attack for two and hope not to die. Uh, it is possible to lose this turn, I'm sure. Uh, if they can somehow, like, double Mayhem Devil or whatnot. But, uh... That's not a game I choose to play right now. Or think that I can. <laughs> Hello, Iron Blood. Hope the day is treating you well. Yeah, okay. Makes makes sense. Okay. Definitely want those. Definitely want these. This deck is going to necromancia us, I'm pretty sure. I think I would want one Hullbreaker Horror. Chandra is like impossible to defend here. Uh, let's cut a Fable. Maybe a Shark Typhoon. I think too much counter magic is probably no good, and negate is probably the worst of it. So we brought in change the equation. Do not put horror here. Okay, but like, what do I put in? A coma? Or do I just assume that they're not going to necromancia me? Because I want a second threat in case I get necromancia. Because it's going to be really hard to win if they do. I mean, I could 2-2 two, two split the Atraxas and Comas feels like an okay. Yeah. Well, it's like Chandra, Chandra is fine here, right? But then she's impossible to defend, which... Because they go very wide and they can ping her. So I don't think that card's great. I mean, I could bring back Fable or Shark Typhoon and just play three. It's fine. This is probably fine. I think Transmogrify is silly against a deck that has so much removal and can have an active Mayhem Devil. These are only blue-white. Yeah, we're good. All right, this is fine. Coma does not interact with Mayhem Devil at all, like really, realistically. I mean, it taps a 3-3, but that's not the part that you care about. Um, that's a mulligan. Uh, 
That's a keep. Bottom of the creativity, I assume I'll find one by the time I need it. Shark can be, can hassle their board. Well, it's one of those things of like, I kind of also assume that they're going to have some early game thought seizes or, or things of that nature and having, keeping the impulse is really nice when you get early thought seized and then Shark Typhoon is like a two for one. So they kind of want to just let me have that. Uh... Yeah, I mean, this is worth spewing on. I'm going to need to remove it anyway. Uh, I can't just sit here and take damage. Unlike Rakdos, this deck has so much reach that, like, I feel like preserving your life total in the early game is a really good idea. I'm going to play the Steam Vents tapped here because I'm not interested in impulsing this turn. Fiery Impulse, maybe, but... Uh, and I want to be able to fable a turn after. Not being able to fire impulse for three damage here might be relevant if they just jam a damn devil, but they didn't. There's no reason to do this in response to that. Uh, this is just me being kind of lazy and wanting to have six value. I assume they're not going to have any one drops that I'm afraid of here. Right, exactly. Kaya, these these the red black deck is insane but but again like had you been at 19 would have made a difference i don't know if you remember I'm, I'm not really asking but it's like it just there is a lot of situations where it's like they can deal 10 right i mean if they if they have a great hand that goes completely bonkers yeah okay they can deal 17 but um if you've managed to control them reasonably then it's like well sometimes they can like come out of nowhere and deal 10 so if you are able to keep yourself at a reasonable life total. Okay, they can't sacrifice two things right now. Unless they hit a land, I guess. Which they did. So they can now go shock blood token. I think I'm discarding Secrets of the Key and Shark Typhoon here. Uh, I'm going to keep the secrets. Definitely discarding Shark Typhoon. I mean, I can discard the secrets, and as long as I hit a land, I can flash it back. And then we have Impulse to try to find. Well, Impulse tries to find a land, but then I can't do that. But Impulse tries to find a removal spell, assuming we don't just hit a land. We did just hit a land. What's Crab Rangoon? I'm sure that's a great joke name for some card that I'm supposed to know, but I don't. Oh, Hard Evidence. Yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking that the Hullbreaker Horror is the card that I mostly get uh, told is the, the big crab. So I was trying to figure out how, like, Hullbreaker Horror not only is legal, but it's in this deck, so. Okay. Creativity for one is not necessarily good enough here, so I think I'm waiting another turn. I think I can afford to with these other cards in my hand. Um, just because if they have Coligan's Command on my X1, then we're done for. Deadly Dispute. Is that worth countering? Probably. No. Because they if they just play a second Mayhem Devil, that's what I need to counter. Furnace Reigns? Yeah, I've seen that card. 
I'm not super concerned about it in that it won't immediately kill me and although it does beat the coma right because Hulk coma gets indestructible but not hex proof yeah There's one coma and two attractions to try to flip into, so. Can you sack it to itself? Oh, you probably can. No. Yeah, sacrifice a serpent creature token named Coma's Coil. No, sacrifice another serpent. It's just another. Yeah, it's just another. It makes sense. I mean, they want they want it to be interacted with. What, there's the snake eating itself? The snake should be able to eat itself because it's the snake that eats itself. Pretty sure we're letting this go. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Don't don't worry. They're they're they've done a lot worse flavor fails than that, so. The one I brought up on Faithless Brewing is my favorite one of literally the scene where they introduce um What's her name? I can't remember it now. Whatever of Noctamun. I just got beat up by, with, by her on the weekend. Samut. Yeah, Samut is supposed to be their speedster. And... How good is Brotherhood's end here? Samut gets caught by palace guards in her very first scene, even though she's supposed to be the fastest thing ever. And obviously it's before she sparked, but that's not the point. The point is, her card, as she is in that set, is designed to be all about speed. I think I'm taking Brotherhood's end here, but I'm pretty sure that we're just going creativity for two. So then, is it worth having the Brotherhood's end after that? I don't know. Or would I rather have something that I can interact with? Although I guess none of this stuff is particularly good interaction against that deck. It's fine, but... To be fair, Sonic gets captured by... Yeah, but Eggman's trying to capture Sonic, and he's a scientist. In theory, that's relevant. My point is, that's his whole thing, is he's trying to catch Sonic, and he's a super genius. So... You would expect him to be able to do it sometime. Um, in before two attracts. I mean, if it happens, it happens, right? We could also hit two comas, and that would be bad too. But we, we got the split. We got the split. Uh, second creativity seems great. So I already have a Brotherhood's End. Spike Field here is fine. Shark Typhoon. Would I rather have a Prismari Command than a Shark Typhoon? Oh, sorry, than a Spike Field Hazard. I can play the Hazard now, which doesn't do much. But if they tap the Witch's Oven, this, they won't tap the Witch's Oven to sacrifice something else. But it might be reasonable. Sorcery, instant enchantment, and land. Okay. I mean, if I want to kill the oven, I'm pretty sure I just Brotherhood's End for artifacts, right? So this... Opponent discards go blank, so we know they boarded that in. Is 
they're a typo on the one ring. It there can't be on the one of one, right? There's no way. There's there's no way. Hey, Siri. Sari. Siri. Siri. It's been a while. I am the symbol of mana. Yeah, if if the one of one one ring has a misprint, I feel like they would just replace it. Like whoever opens it, they would just do a replacement and then destroy the one ring. And if they did, they should make a video where they like throw it into a volcano. Well, the other cards have said the flavor fail of a typo on the one rings text. So it could just be in the text, right? The way they said that. I'm hoping ever No, there's no way, Kaya. It's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, I, I get that you want to be the like we just want to watch the world burn, but like there it's just never gonna happen. Someone like Post Malone or um, uh, some Wall Street person with endless amounts of money is going to end up owning it, and that's fine. It's it's yeah, Cassius Marsh. That's right, Cassius Marsh. All right, they're trying to figure out how much damage they can do here. Uh, I assume this means that they don't have the grab the reins nonsense. If they do, depending on what they target, uh, I can tap down their Witch's Oven in response using Coma. If they target Atraxa, I could just tap down the Atraxa. Okay, so there's the Furnace range. They're going for Atraxa. So I don't think... I don't think they can kill me if I... Um, make it so the Atraxa can't attack. Uh, they will be able to sacrifice it. Uh, and that means they'll almost definitely be able to kill my Coma. But all of that is going to take resources. Yeah, I know. I understand. I understand that I need to let them steal it. I'm just talking through what's what's likely to happen here. Because I have time. They've been tanking a long time. I have enough time to talk about it. So we, we let them do this. We let them go to combat. Now I'm going to tap down the Atraxa. Which means at some point this turn they're going to sacrifice it. Which means I'm going to have a window to spike field the Unlucky Witness. Um, And if they want to kill my coma, they're putting six damage into that. I have a lot of cards in hand, so there's a good chance we just recover. As, as long as I don't die this turn, I'm fairly confident I'm going to win. Uh, I will block with coma if given the opportunity here. Did they go face? I believe they did. I don't think that means they have lethal necessarily. Yeah, there's, there's other bounties for the one ring that are definitely uh, low. Going face. I don't think without a second Mayhem Devil they're going to have enough damage here. It's possible, right? I don't know all the cards that they play and or can be playing. Here comes the Atraxa Sacrifice. No! They sacrifice the Mayhem Devil. Interesting. And then they sack the food after they sack the Mayhem Devil? Yeah, we spike field the witness now. Don't take one damage from that, plus exile it. They have the mana flow. No, I understand that, but couldn't they have done that before sacking the Mayhem Devil? 
did they they didn't have to sequence it like that right oh they because of the witch yeah but yeah i guess no they didn't they didn't because the only way they could have the food it's fine it's fine the only way they could have the food is if they sack the devil first yeah okay it makes sense my bad i just Oh, hell yeah. They're not giving the Atraxa back. They're killing me. Ah, let's, let's let them put it on the stack. All right, game three. Yeah, good beats. Absolutely. Yeah, I was thinking, like, do they have a fling? Um... Nothing there mattered. Every choice I made there mattered. Every single choice I made there mattered. Um, it, it just... They, they just had enough to be able to beat me. Theirs? I mean, they put me to exactly dead. And, and had I not spike fielded, it would have been negative one. But, like... I think the way they did that was... It had to be done almost exactly the way they did it. So I... Say a lot of that mattered. They played it right. Exactly. I'd say... Yeah, I, I do, Kai. If I have to mail them to you, I will. If you're coming up to the store championship in Oakville this weekend, uh, I'll, I'll have them for you. Ironically, if we didn't spike field, dude, I think we can live. We ping the copy with the OG on the stack. Oh, ha, huh, that's really funny. Yeah, yeah, you might be right. Well, now that plays on my radar for the next one. No, yeah, you I mean you don't do that, right? But it, yeah. Can I keep this? Yeah, I'm going to keep it. I don't think it's right. If I get Thoughtseize, this is going to fall apart. Maybe you're thinking about their last card being exactly ob. But if exactly ob is the thing that it's most likely, most likely to kill me there, then I think you do it, right? Blue. You know what? Good enough. Good enough. I will take it. Thank you, deck. I I ain't mad. I think you should have cast Brotherhood's End instead of Creativity. I think we were really far behind, and I don't know if that was going to be good enough. Okay, this is a little bit annoying that that came in perfectly timed for them. Uh, but depending on what they take here, we'll have a good idea of the rest of their hand. I think they take Fable, but... And they do. Good choice. Frustrating card. Okay. Oh. It's getting hairy. Are you talking to me, Alucartes? Because I don't, I don't know what MXP Tacoma is. I do know what Portland is. I've been there, but uh, I didn't get to see any of the city. Yeah, that's frustrating. Well, I guess I'm killing the goblin. Just. I don't want to end up so far behind. 
MXP, Magic Experience, which is the West Coast naming of the GPs happening this year. Weird. Well, no, that makes sense because that's been part of their shit. That's a really frustrating card to have because I need the card selection, but they can just sack. It's fine, but no, GP, lack of GP naming makes sense because uh, GPs weren't GPs at the end. And it makes sense to make them not GPs. GPs are not, it's not about the tournament anymore. The tournament is there. The tournament's a part of it. But uh, it is, it does make a lot more sense to make it like a convention that has a tournament in it and let the RCs be the thing that are tournament focused. Because the GPs, as they exist now, they don't feed into anything, right? Yeah, they should use Magic Con. That's exactly what they should call it, right? Like, I don't understand not calling it, like, a convention. Everything else in the world just uses the word convention, and it's fine, and we're all fine here now. How are you? Uh, I think I'm shooting down this Blood Tithe Harvester, and if they sack in response, I'm not going to be too broken up about it. Yeah, but this is, I mean, this is the hand I kept. As soon as we top a blue source, we're kind of in a pretty reasonable spot, but it could just not happen forever. Okay. If they have a Mayhem Devil, we're going to be in some amount of trouble. If this is a removal spell, okay, that's a blood sacrifice for Cauldron Familiar. Bring back the Cauldron Familiar, that's fine. Force them to use this. Yeah. Two cards in exile. Obnixilis and Blood Crypt. Might be facing down two Obnixili. Which is not the end of the world. That's fine. Lose the creativity. I get to dig for another one here. Oh, they didn't grab the ob. So they can't cast it. Oh, they can't cast it. Yeah, they can. Okay. Sack the cauldron familiar to get a copy. Yep. That's cool. Ah, uh, Red Black Sacrifice, you are such a good deck. They make a Devil. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I think I'll lose two. Yeah. I think it's Obnixipodes. Pretty sure. I read it online. That's not what I needed to draw. And this blocks and kills the goblin. Yeah, definitely. Definitely in a poor spot. Probably should have kept one of the impulses. Definitely feels like this blue mana came up just a little bit too late. The secrets of the key, let them take the change of the equation. I'm sure, this is disastrously wrong in some way that I haven't anticipated, but. 
basically we're just at the point of top deck creativity or die. I'm fairly certain. Lose to discard the steam vents. Yeah. I'm going to sack the clue to dig one, and then we'll see if we draw creativity. Just got to hit it. Uh... I do get to flip Fable here. They're more likely to have creature removal than removal for the treasure token. It's probably correct. Uh, if we draw Brotherhood's End 2, I get to wipe out the Obnixil Eye plus the Reflection. None of those things. Just take a land. Just take a land. Okay. Not not dead yet. I should have just played the Stormcarved Coast there and then discarded. Yeah. To the Omnixilis. Put Gigantha in their hand last turn, which is pretty low impact, so it's it's possible we come out of this. We got flashback on Secrets of the Key this turn, so. Elk. Okay, let's rip a creativity. Come on now. Come on now. Ah, uh, why are you too late? I'm just dead. I mean, I'm not literally dead, but it's essentially dead. I mean, I can play the Brotherhood's End, kill almost everything, chump block the Gigantha for a turn, draw Creativity X1. So let's stick in for a second. Attack? Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, because that probably wipes that. Yeah, yeah, yes, you're all correct. You're all correct, you're all correct, and I made a bad decision because I was just wasn't thinking about it. It's, it's Yes, 100%. Yes, 100%. 100%. You're all correct. I, I made a punt there because I was just thinking about how bad the situation was and not how good I could make it. I think we're we're just dead anyway. But we're, I, I still have the chump block. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. I think you should win instead of lose. I agree, but I just wasn't thinking about it because we were so far behind and I was trying to dig to that creativity and it really wasn't like, uh, it was making the best of a bad situation, which I should 100% have done. And I, and I I have made a lot of good plays by attacking with tokens into sure death. Um, the fact that it wasn't a goblin shaman, so I wasn't getting a treasure probably made me think about it less. Um, didn't matter anyway. We weren't going to draw out, but make the right plays. Make the right plays 100% of the time. Don't do what I just did. This is a great deck. Uh, the fact that we went 2-3 is not indicative of how good this deck is, and uh, certainly my sideboarding plan in multiple matchups was not great, especially Mono Green and the Mirror, where I went into the controlling deck, whereas when we played against the Jund Transmogrify version, uh, I felt like it was pretty good to go into the control deck against creativity against the mirror they did not which assume means i assume that means i was wrong to do so um yeah i mean this this i, I like this version a lot uh everything in it seems to really have its place secrets of the key is a great card but you certainly don't want to draw too many of them because it's very mana intensive um Having the fifth creativity effect in the transmogrify in the main deck is great, and there's a lot of um, decks you get to sideboard it out against, which is 
it's nice to have cards that you feel comfortable sideboarding out in a lot of matchups. Four Shark Typhoons is good in a lot of controlling matchups. So uh, this is a great deck. I highly recommend it. If you want to secret better than the Crab Investigating card, you can't play that in this format. Uh, hard evidence. Um, if you're interested in this deck, please look up Pi Ganti slash all of these other people's grinding testing team that has great sideboard notes on it and is apparently the source of this deck. Uh, and uh, check out their sideboarding guide. If you've just been watching it here, uh, I'll try to have a link in the description of this video and you can hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and check out any of my other videos you're interested in, and I will see you there. For those who are live with us now, it's time to play some bad decks.